Speaker, the Labor Party is uh, supporting this bill. Uh, I would uh, like to address uh, again the issue that is, the Minister has just spoken to, which is the issue as to the structure of this new organisation. As uh, listeners will have heard from the Minister, this new entity uh, called the Electoral Commission it takes over functions uh, that were previously the functions of the Chief Electoral Officer and the Electoral Commission. So those two uh, officers, if you like, uh, merged into this one. And the question that the Select Committee had to grapple with, uh, as the Government has had to grapple with, is what is the proper form of that entity? Now, this is an important question. The, uh, the um, administration of elections in a democracy has to be seen to be impartial. We have to maintain confidence in the impartiality of election processes in order to maintain confidence of the people in democracy. Um, that's, uh, you know, they, there's that old saying that the only thing worse than democracy is the alternatives, which is another way of saying that democracy is incredibly important, incredibly important. And uh, indeed, if you look at the countries that have got the most problems in the world, uh, by and large, they don't have the benefit of democracy. They don't have the checks and balances that come with democracy. If governments make a mistake in our system and they get it too far wrong, then the people have the right to vote them out and they get a new government and those problems are fixed. Uh, or some of those problems are fixed. There's no such thing as perfection. Uh, the, uh, the, the issue that, w or the choices that we effectively had uh, for the entity that was being formed were an independent crown entity, uh, which is a crown entity, but it sits independent of the executive and in the way it administers itself. Uh, uh, and the other choice uh, of the final two choices was an officer of parliament. Officers of Parliament currently include the, um, the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment and the Auditor General, to name but two, also Ombudsman. The uh, submissions that we had in favour of the uh, Officer of Parliament uh, model were, were very well considered. They were very fulsome, and they came from some eminent specialists in this area. Uh, uh, Professor Andrew Geddes was one of them. The New Zealand Law Society submission supported that uh, outcome as well as did various other submitters. Uh, they pointed out that if it was a, a, an officer of parliament, then this organisation would be accountable to parliament rather than accountable to the executive. And they thought that that was better than uh, an independent Crown entity which does have some responsibilities back to the Minister. Uh, and there was some strength in that argument and as a committee uh, we were quite attracted to the argument for a while and we sought advice, uh, further advice on the issue uh, but in the end we were, pers were persuaded uh, in large part from the advice from Dave McGee QC, uh, long serving clerk of this House before he retired from that role and became an Ombudsman and he made a number of points as to why the, uh, uh, the Officer of Parliament route was inappropriate. And those are detailed in the Select Committee report. Uh, they include the, uh, the fact that um, the, uh, uh, some, some theoretical concerns about the involvement of the Speaker in terms of Officers of Parliament uh, and that the Speaker ought not to have been put in positions that would be inappropriate. They also, uh, uh, he also pointed out that there are quite a number of administrative functions that this new entity has uh, that are uh, uh, inconsistent with the normal uh, model for officers of parliament. Uh, and uh, for those and other reasons that he detailed, uh, he was strongly of the view that we uh, would be wrong to create an officer of parliament, in part because he thought it would undermine the conventions that have already developed around the use of the Officer of Parliament model and where it's appropriate. Uh, of course, in New Zealand we don't have a written constitution. The conventions of this Parliament and the conventions of the various institutions of, um, of uh, both government and the courts and the, uh, are, 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 are important parts of the, the actual constitution that we have in New Zealand. And the convention around the appointment of Officers of Parliament is, uh, is another uh, uh, important convention that we ought to not lightly undermine and Dave McGee's advice was that 
to uh, create this entity as an officer of parliament would undermine the conventions that have developed. So for those reasons, uh, the committee was persuaded that uh, the proper model was the independent Crown entity model, but we did uh, agree on an additional protection that uh, was not found in the original version of the bill that came to select committee, and that was the way in which we appoint members of that electoral commission. Uh, that new electoral commission. And the provision that was in the bill as came to select committee was that they would be appointed by the minister. Uh, we thought that was wrong. We thought that the minister uh, uh, could be seen to be, both could be and would be seen to be potentially um, conflicted and, and might prefer the interests of his or her own party over the interests of the um, independent, independence of the people who are appointed to those roles. Uh, for that reason, the committee recommended and the government has agreed that the members of the independent Crown entity ought to be appointed by the Governor-General at the recommendation of the House of Representatives. So the House of Representatives is, is of course, representative of more than just the government. The opposition uh, parties are also uh, represented and there will be a, a stronger um, 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 there, will, there will be strong incentives, if you like, on the House of Representatives to, uh, to make uh, recommendations that are not biased in favour of the interests of any one particular party. We think that that's a good balance to have reached. We had one other submission from uh, Mr Geddes that I feel I should record, which was that he thought that the Electoral Commission should be one person rather than three. He thought that in practice during elections, decisions uh, are required quickly of the Electoral Commission and that that was one of the problems that we had with the prior model, uh, uh, implementing fast decisions for the benefit of participants in the election clarifying areas of uncertainty during the electoral process. He thought that would be best handled by one commissioner rather than three commissioners. Uh, we heard from Mr Henry, I think it was, uh, uh, one of these submitters and a former, um, I forget whether he's a former Chief Electoral Officer or a former electoral, commis uh, electoral Commissioner, I think he was former Chief Electoral Officer, but someone correct me if I've got that wrong. In any event, he submitted to us that in reality the day-to-day uh, the, 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 the -day decisions on what should be done in respect of advertisements and donation rules and all those sorts of things uh, will be delegated to the executive of this new organisation rather than be at the commission level and that in the rare event where there are decisions that are required from the commission rather than falling within the delegation of people uh, working for the commission that the, it was quite proper that the three commissioners be, uh, be um, called together and uh, meet on the issue. Uh, I didn't think it would be so frequent an occurrence as to be impractical or, or unduly expensive. Uh, so, uh, uh, for those reasons, we stu stuck with the status quo of three representatives. There's one other issue I want to refer to, and that is what this bill doesn't fix up, and that is a glaring omission in our electoral laws to have proper transparency around donations. Uh, this was an area uh, where the government has refused to be part of a consensus. They say there is no consensus, but the only reason there isn't a consensus is that the government won't agree to one. If they were to um, agree reasonable rules around transparency, we would have them. But the reality is in New Zealand, we don't have transparency around donations to, to electoral parties. In the last election, we knew less than 10% of, of the source of less than 10% of the funds that were used by parties in elections, and that's not good enough. We need transparency around, uh, around donations in order to maintain public confidence in our electoral processes. Uh, if we don't, you can never escape the imputation that there is policy for purchase. You don't know um, what influence has been bought by donors. Um, donating to political parties is a perfectly proper and worthy thing to do, but it ought to be transparent. There is no shame in making a donation. There should be no uh, shame and transparency as to donations so that we can maintain public confidence in our electoral processes. And I think it's a great shame that the government uh, has not addressed that particular issue.